Thank you, uh, Gloria, and it's, it's really an honor to be here, although I have to admit that I, I, I keep, I, I don't know if I can dance quite like a dinosaur in quite the way that I, that I should, but one person got that. <laughs> one person. What I wanted to do was just uh, first uh, welcome you to uh, ASU and just say a little bit about ASU. Many of you are our students, but we have a lot of people uh, that aren't our students and a lot of people watching in off of the internet. Let me say to you that, that it's time for change in every institution. It is the design of our institutions that have held us back in many ways. It's the structure of the culture inside our institutions. It's the way in which we have engaged or not engaged or been responsive or not been responsive. And so what we've been engaged in here at ASU over the last more than a decade is re-engineering what a public university is supposed to be. A public university is supposed to be a place that finds talent everywhere, moves that talent forward without some kind of artificial gap or separation, is inclusive to talent rather than exclusive based on some test that you take in high school, and, and measures, absolutely, and then measures ultimately the success of the institution not based on who we exclude, but who we include and how they succeed. And it's absolutely important that you, 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 you get this grasp of just this, this, this intent of what we're trying to do here. So from our perspective, a public university has failed if its student body is not representative of all of the diversity of the community in which it is embedded. A public university has failed, has failed, if it doesn't find an advanced talent everywhere. A public university has failed if it can't reach out to an individual from any family background and offer them an opportunity in a public institution setting to realize whatever dream they can conceptualize without any constraint. Now this is a, an ideal, this is called an objective that we work toward. And it's one that's very hard to achieve, but it's one that we're deeply and profoundly committed to and we're 12 years into this transformation process. So I want you to know what ASU is about and what, wh why we're here and what we're trying to achieve. Now, here we're sitting right now, I just wanna, wanna sort of put this take the lead moment into perspective because you really have to understand that all of us in this room are at an unbelievable moment in human history. We're sitting inside a wooden stick building I say that on purpose because we're still at the end of what I consider to be the Stone Age of thinking, the Stone Age world. We're in a, in a wooden stick building. All of us are the product of our genetic mother, a woman who was alive about 200,000 years ago. She's called the mitochondrial Eve or the genetic Eve. Everyone that's alive today is a product of or directly related to this single individual woman. That was 9,000 generations ago, about, give or take. <laughs> My daughter would start arguing with me at this point. <laughs> How do you know it's 9,000? Well, it's about, that sort of covers that. 9,000 generations ago. Only in the last 20 generations, have we known what science is? Only in the last 14 or 15 generations have we known what a democracy at scale might be. Only in the last four generations in that emergent democracy, the American democracy, the constitutional democracy, have women gained suffrage. Only four generations. And in two generations, as we just heard, we now have realized this moment wherein in this last two generations of 9,000 generations of our present configuration, our present species configuration, in the last two generations, we have matured and evolved and reached a moment where the entire theme of this conference, Take the Lead, is unbelievably 
possible. And think about this moment in history. Thousands and thousands and thousands of generations without access to all of the talent and leadership necessary for the world to move even more quickly to higher levels of greatness and higher levels of achievement. Thousands of generations. Think about, if you know history, just think about the pain and suffering of the last hundred generations, the last two hundred generations, dominated largely by men, dominated largely by men who sought fighting and war as the way in which things would be resolved. Surely we've reached a moment in our own evolution as a species where it is time for all talent, all energy, all creativity in any individual human being to have the cap capacity to take the lead, to make the decisions, to move us forward in new and better ways. And so when Gloria came with this idea, as she indicated, we were tremendously excited about this opportunity to be a part of this, to be a part of this unbelievable moment in history where we can have this conversation, where you all can listen to tremendous thinkers and thought leaders, unbelievably inspiring in terms of helping us to figure out how can we, not in 20 generations, but in this generation, in this time frame, in this generation, can we once and for all have available all the talent that's needed, all the ideas, all the perspectives that leadership roles being filled by the best person, the best person can finally be achieved. So I want to welcome you all to this event. And it, it, it literally is the case. The dinosaur is going to walk off. <laughs> it is time to take the lead. I'm, I'm tremendously excited about all of this. So thank you. Thank you.